Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. We've just gotten the ability to make the Blood Altar. So now it's time to delve into Blood Magic, try to get a Tier 2 Blood Altar, which should allow us to make the stuff we need to make the... Uh, what's it called? The Rune... Rune? Rune? Runic Altar. That's what it's called. Yeah, it should allow us to make the stuff we need to make the Runic Altar, specifically the Reinforced Slates, which require a Blood Altar Tier 2. Okay, so I'm not well versed in Blood Magic, but we've got these Demonic Wills, I think we're going to need that for something. I think one of the first things I need to do, however, is make a Sacrificial Dagger from Blood Magic. Just some glass, gold, and a Steel Tool Rod, which I just made before recording this episode. And this is going to allow us to hurt ourselves to fill the blood altar with blood. So it's like the early game way of getting blood, which is basically uh, the, the energy system of blood magic. And there you go. It's now filled with the day. <laughs> no. Uh, there we go. Yep. Okay. Now we got some blood. And, uh, oh. Oh, I didn't realize it actually drains over time. So I guess you better make sure you're going to use it right then and there. Hmm. Probably going to have to eat a lot of food doing that. Okay, I think we can make a blood orb which will allow us to store the blood a bit better, I think. Um, I think the default recipe is a diamond. Let's hope it's the default recipe. Oh, it looks like it's consuming it. Like 2 LP per tick. Yeah, and you can see it's going to make a blood orb when it's done. Surprisingly slow. Should I fill it up a bit more? I don't think it's going to make it faster. But yeah, I think the blood orb is going to allow us to store blood inside of the orb, and I'm assuming it won't go down over time in the orb, so it's probably a better way of storing it than in the blood altar. I think it's basically just like a battery, and it allows to store blood in your personal whatever network, your your blood network, whatever that means, which I think just means you can access it anywhere instead of only at the altar. There we go. Oh. Okay, yeah, so now if you right-click with the weak blood orb, it's actually going to fill up the blood orb, sort of like you're using the sacrificial dagger, except it fills up the orb itself, not anything else, I believe. 2400. Oh, it stopped uh, going down. wonder why. Maybe it only goes down to a certain point? No, it was below that before, though. Does the blood orb have something to do with it? I don't know. Anyway, I thought you had to bind this to yourself. Oh, I guess I somehow did. Current owner, me. Alright, so now it's bound to me. Now, I think... I think we can do something that will allow us to see how much blood we have in our personal blood network or whatever it's called. Divination? Divination, divination sigil, I think, is it. Blank slate. And a few stone inside of a blood altar. So we need a blank slate, which we can make by throwing stone inside of the blood altar. Okay. So let's do that. I'm sure we're going to need quite a few of these. Ugh, it's going to take a while. I'm assuming the higher tiers of altars probably transfer the LP faster. Do I really have to have to touch it with an empty hand to be able to get it out? Wish there was an easier way. Now what I wonder is, when this runs out, is it going to take it out of my personal network? Of what's stored in my blood orb? 
Let's see. Let's test this, because this thing's about to run out. So what's going to happen? Oh, oh, it's starting to die down. So that LP just got wasted. So then how do I, like... Maybe, maybe you take this out and put the blood orb in, and it just fills it. No, this is filling network, so it's actually, right now, it's set to extract from the blood altar into the orb. I wonder if there's a way to reverse it. I don't know, but when you put it in there, you can see it's got 1600, but that's just from this, the one probe, I think, is what's providing this tooltip. So I don't think that's the way you're supposed to see it. Um, let's throw this in. So can you throw in multiple items? Because I thought that recipe showed redstone along with that. Like, that doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, is it doing something? No. The redstone doesn't do anything either. I don't know how to use that. Okay, I need to do some reading. This is Arcane Ashes. This is Alchemy Array. I don't get it. <laughs> but um, if I wanted to make the ashes, it requires a Hellfire Forge, which requires, among other strange stuff, a Rune of Fire, which we need the Runic Altar from Batania to even be able to make this, and that's what we're getting into Blood Magic to be able to make, so that wouldn't make much sense. I think the default recipe is the Blood Orb, I'm assuming filled up, combined with the blank slate. Obviously that doesn't work. Alright, so I've just been sitting here bleeding all over the place. Um, I don't know what to do about the divination sigil. I think the guide I was looking at is for an old version, probably, because it's from 2004. Three years ago. So most likely for an older version, I'm thinking. Or it could just be changed recipes, who knows. Anyway, I'm just going through the process of trying to upgrade this altar to the next tier. And this is going by the old guide again, so <laughs> maybe this is wrong, but it says that you basically just need eight runes of any type, I think, around the blood altar. And runes, I believe, affect the altar itself, depending on the type. If it's a blank rune, then it doesn't do anything other than just maybe upgrading the tier of it. But then there's other ones like speed rune, for example, which I believe makes the blood altar do stuff faster. And I noticed, I mean, I commented before about how slow it was at filling up the... Uh, the diamond to make it a weak blood orb and, and the blank slates and everything. So being faster would be nice. And there's some other ones, I'm not sure what they all do. But I'm just going to go with speed for now. So I basically just had to grind out a ton of blank slates. I needed to make eight blank runes, and these should be enough to make the better tier of altar itself, but I want speed runes. So speed runes take the blank rune plus two blank slates for each one, and I need eight of them. So I just had to make a whole bunch of those. But I think we have enough now. Yeah. Okay. And apparently that has to be underneath the blood altar. Where should I put this? Like, I'm not putting it into a proper place just yet, but it definitely shouldn't be here. Unless... Actually, yeah, it can go here. That's fine. So I think we just need to do something like that. Mm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it took a second. It says tier two now. <laughs> yeah, I just had to think for a second, I guess. Okay, and now we got a tier two altar. I think we can make a better a better blood orb as well. I think I think it's with a emerald. I don't know why I care about the blood orb so much. It's not like I even know how to use it. But I think it's with an emerald. What? Are... Oh, did it go into my mining backpack? Ah, it did. Let's see what it's gonna make. That's not making anything. Maybe it needs my weak blood orb. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, wait, no, it's just filling the network. Ah, I don't know, whatever. It's fine, I guess, even though I don't know how to access my network at all. <laughs> sure, why not? 
Okay, well, we have the tier two altar, so let's see. Let's see what I need to make to make the... I forgot the name again. The runic altar. Reinforced slate. Oh, so that's just straight up blank slate and some LP makes reinforced slate. Okay, and I just need two. Oh, that's super easy. All right. Well, we're well on our way. We're just about to be able to make the runic altar finally. Let me uh, get that made. All right, I've gone ahead and made the runic altar. To make runes, though, we're going to need some more mana. And of course, the main purpose of making the runic altar is to make the better mana generating flowers. So unfortunately, I've got to live with the bad with generating mana the slow way a little bit longer. So just to automate it very, very slightly, I'm going to make the hovering hourglass from Botania. Pretty simple. Gold, redstone, some mana glass, and a single mana steel ingot. Uh, this thing is, well, you'll see it in a second. It's really cool. Nighttime. Daytime. And the reason I'm making that along with this dropper is because instead of just throwing the coal on the ground to be burned by these things, I don't want to do that in mass because the items might despawn. So I'd rather kind of automate it and have it just slowly give out the coal every once in a while. So... Let's do this. Uh, that's not a good place. Because it's in the way of the pure daisies. I'll put it here. And I'll put the dropper right here. I want it to, eh, I want it to face down. There we go. Ah, right, now I can't get out. Okay, so that's facing down. Now, the way the hourglass works is just hovering, as the name implies. It's pretty cool looking, and it basically just emits a redstone pulse, depending on how much sand you put in it. So the hourglass actually uses real sand. So if you put one bit of normal sand in it, like that. Oh, whoops, I just put the whole stack. If you put one bit of sand in it, every second it does that which is sending a redstone pulse, which for the dropper is going to make it drop one item every second. Now, of course, that's way too rapid, so I want something like, I don't know, every four seconds, maybe? So, fill this up. Boop. Boop. Okay, so it should work pretty nicely, and less chance of the stuff despawning, because it's not just all getting thrown up onto the ground. So it should give us a little bit of mana. Because we're definitely going to need more than this to do all the slate work we're doing. Or the rune work, rather. Okay. I want this as close as possible to the mana pool with one gap, because I'm going to be putting a mana spreader in between these two, because we're going to have to get mana to the runic altar. And the closer it is, the less time it takes for the mana bursts to spread. Do I have any extra... Um, nope, don't have any extra... Uh, what are these called again? Mana spreaders. Let's see if I can make that real quick. Ah, it takes a mana focus. Alright, one sec. I just switched this thing over to 8 seconds because it was actually outputting a bit too much. Hopefully that's closer. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, it's fine. I just don't want to waste the vast majority of my coal. Alright. So I've got the Lexica Batania, one of the forest, meets some mana spreaders. Let's set this down. Link that. So now if the runic altar needs mana, it will get it, and fairly fast as well. Now, now we need to make some runes. So let's take a look at what kind of runes we want to make. So again, the generating flora I want is the Gormarialis, or however you pronounce that, the eating flower. And for that, we're going to need a bunch of petals, and we're going to need rune of summer, rune of fire. Let's start with the rune of fire. Whoops. Let's shift click to look at it. Okay, so to make two runes of fire, we're going to need to put all of these things on the runic altar. Easy, 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 mana steel. That requires actual steel and mana. It's pretty easy. And I forgot, what's this? Oh, okay, it's, well, it's a different bunch of, a bunch of different things. But most likely redstone's the easiest. Good to see that hasn't changed from the default recipe. All right, let me go gather up all those things and make a rune of fire.
Uh, so I gotta be a little bit careful here. I thought it was... Like, I felt like it was a different recipe from default for the mana powder. And then I looked it up, and it looked like it's normal, right? Oh, look at all these things you can make it out of. But that's according to the book, the Lexica Batania, which unfortunately, it does not reflect the changes that have been made to recipes in the mod pack. So, recipes through the Lexica Batania may be inaccurate. I double-checked on what we need to make the flour I'm trying to make, by the way, and it is still vanilla, but the ingredients that make it up are not necessarily. So if you look up mana powder through JEI, you can see it has to be Ventium Dust. So, gotta double check there. So let's make a bunch of Ventium Dust. Hopefully this doesn't take up, like, all my mana. Whew! Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Oh. Oh, that made a lot. Oh right, each one makes four mana powder. <laughs> Alright, I've got enough mana powder for life. So, for the fire rune, let's just go through J.I. probably a bit faster. We need one of each of these, so we're going to need to take up a lot of our room down here. So we're going to need one of that, one of that, one of that, uh, one of that, and one of this. Is it just five, or am I missing something? Yeah, just those five. And we're also going to need Living Rock, for a reason that you'll see in just a second. Okay, so if we place one of each of these, it starts to float around. And that noise is because it's got a valid recipe, and you can see it shows that little fire rune symbol. To the right of all those ingredients, you can see it's filling up, that's because it's receiving mana. Once it's filled up, it'll make another noise, I think. Oh, not yet. Uh, now we right-click it with the living rock. That's kind of like what the rune's going to be inscribed upon. And then, yeah, you really need like your whole bar for this. And then you use the one of the forest. And there you go. Now we got a couple runes of fire. Drop pop candy. And that did take up too much mana, so I'm going to go ahead and do this a couple times. Okay, maybe we went a little bit overboard. I made ten runes of fire. So let's look at all the other runes we're going to have to make. I'm not going to do them all on camera, because it's not terribly interesting just kind of clicking a bunch and waiting. So we have the runes of fire. Great, so we need the rune of summer. This is a complex rune. The rune of summer itself requires rune of air and rune of earth. So I'm going to need to make both of these, and I just want to make sure that they're all doable. Carpet, feather, mana powder, and mana steel. That's pretty straightforward. Earth... Yeah, mana powder and mana steel, I think, are used in, like, every rune. Pretty much. Stone, block, coal, mushroom. Yeah, they shouldn't be too hard. And this itself, melon, slime ball, sand. Okay, so I'm gonna make a bunch of these. Alright, I've made the rune of earth and rune of air, so now I'm gonna show you something pretty handy about making runes. If you go to make more complex runes, like the rune of summer, any kind of a rune that requires other runes as ingredients, the nice thing about it is that it doesn't actually consume the runes. So the runes won't get consumed. The other things will, but not the runes. I think more complex runes also take more mana, so it's taken a little bit longer. There we go. So you get the runes you had just made, along with the runes back that you put into it. And with that, I have four runes of summer, and I should have everything I need to make a bunch of Gormialysis. Well, four to be exact. So it's going to take red petal, yellow petal, light gray, rune of fire, rune of summer, and then seeds to finish it off in the petal apothecary. And we've got two of the light grays and two of the yellows and one of everything else. All right, let's do this. And there we go. Let's do the shortcut. Oh, I tried to put everything back. Give me those back. Yeah, I didn't know it actually will partially complete your, uh, your like, shortcut recipe. If you're missing an item. I never knew that. Anyway, look at this. We have four awesome generating flowers. All right, we can just stop this entirely. Actually, I'm probably gonna want, 
I'm probably gonna want that. I'm just not gonna want it full filled with coal. Cool. What? Filled with coal. But these flowers, we need no longer. The only tricky thing about the Cormialises is that they will eat food. Like, if you give them too much food, they'll eat it, but they won't generate mana, so they'll just waste it. So you gotta make sure you time it just right. But I need to check the book and see exactly how much food lasts, because it, it depends on how strong the food is, right? Like, how much the food heals, how much, like, hunger it restores will affect how long it lasts and how long you have to wait before giving it more. So let's take a look. Uh, there's a cache that we can only digest a single food at any given time. The mana is created when it's done. Any other food it finds, it'll also devour, but will not create any mana from it. The amount of time it takes to digest a delicacy depends on its nutritional value. In layman's terms, the amount of food points it restores. A steak will take four seconds to digest, an apple will take two, a loaf of bread will take two and a half. Okay, so the amount of food points it restores. So if I'm understanding that correctly, a steak takes four because it restores four haunches. Yeah, okay, so you, you know how there's the direct food it restores? That's the thing up top. And then below that, kind of smaller, yellowish, that's the saturation it gives you. So apparently it just ignores the saturation entirely. Apparently it only matters what the base hunger restoration is. So because that's four haunches, or whatever you want to call those, that means four seconds. You'll want to give it one steak every four seconds. Okay, so let me go see what kind of food I can make. I've gone ahead and made 18 vegetarian lettuce wraps, which restore four foods, so we're going to want to give the Gourmet Alice one of these every four seconds. Not going to last very long, obviously, but this is for demonstration purposes more than anything. And just to demonstrate it a bit further, I just want to show you how much more mana the Gourmet Alice makes compared to the Endo Flames. So here's all the eight end of flames. I just put them back here. And they're all linked to, th to this one specific mana spreader. So I'm just going to dump a bunch. Just let them do their thing. So now they're outputting as much mana as they possibly can. Look at how fast this mana spreader is filling up. Right, like, it's not even close to filling up. It's got time to spare. It can get rid of the mana easily. It's not really getting that much. Okay. Okay. Now, with this, which is actually linked to that one, let's link it to this one just for simplicity. Alright, with it linked to that, let's set this for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Fill this with food. Look at that. It's still full of mana, because this thing is still full of mana. It can't even take it out fast enough. And yeah, it makes a disgusting eating noise. I hate it. <laughs> but look, this thing can't even deal with how much mana it's getting. Like, I think we're wasting it. Are we wasting it? There's only one way to be sure, I guess. No, we're definitely wasting it. Because it's filling itself... Well, let's see what one piece of food does. How much mana one piece of food gives it. So with this thing completely empty, this thing should start to go down. Yeah. So that's how fast it can deplete its mana reserve. So if we give it one piece of food... Uh, maybe we're not wasting it, actually. It gives it, gives it a little bit less than half a bar. Yeah, maybe that's not being wasted. So you can see just how much mana it makes. A lot. Way, way more. Way more mana than the mana spreader can even really deal with. And there's things you can do about that, by the way. There are higher tier mana spreaders. Um, at Batania Spreader. I think there's... Yeah, there's two more tiers. So the basic tier is just the mana spreader. And then you can upgrade that to the Elven Mana Spreader later on. That requires access to the Elven Portal, 
which is where you get stuff like Elementium and Dreamwood. And then above that, there's also the Gaia Mana Spreader, which requires you to defeat the Gaia Guardian, which is a big boss that you have to do this whole ritual thing to summon. So yeah, you can get better Mana Spreaders, and you can also upgrade Mana Spreaders too with lenses and stuff to make them work a little bit faster. Okay, so where do I want to go from here? So now I can generate as much mana as I want, sort of, but we do have some problems. The biggest problem is that you saw how much food it was going through, right? Like one of these every, one of the, one of the vegetarian lettuce drops every four seconds. That's really fast. I'm not producing food nearly fast enough to do anything with that, to keep it supplied. So what I need to do is I need to set up some sort of auto crafting of food from our food bank here. So I need to pick something that's relatively easy to make and provides a lot of food restoration and just auto craft it, just mass produce auto craft it. So let me think of what I want to make. I want to make cucumber salad. So cucumber salad, it's pretty easy to make and really good. You can see one, two, three, four, five, five and a half things of health. And it's super easy to make, aside from just the tools. The raw ingredients it takes is a cucumber plus a spring salad, and a spring salad is just the tools, which are infinitely reusable, plus lettuce and, well, a bunch of things, carrots, onion, radish. So basically it just requires three vegetables. In this case, I'm going to use onion and cucumber and lettuce, and that's it. And you get spring salad, or sorry, cucumber salad. Cucumber salad is like an upgraded version of spring salad, which is what I've been eating. So super simple, super nice. So I just activated, just manually activated those specific three things. So I can build up a nice store of them. Because this whole system is still active, the whole bone mill system. I just deactivated the mechanical users. So I just activated the three to start generating a bunch of lettuce, cucumber, and onions. Already got 328 lettuce. So that's going to build up. Don't have to worry too much about the bone zone getting depleted. Got 3,878 bones. Think I'll be fine. So, I want to craft the food, obviously. Now, I could do that with the mechanical crafters, but they suck. Remember how much they sucked? They really sucked. So I was looking at the RF Tools Crafter, which is the one I'm most familiar with, and it's super powerful. Unfortunately, though, it does require ME Crafting Terminal, which requires an ME terminal, which requires formation core, annihilation core, and that requires logic processors, and an inscriber, and inscriber takes this stuff, and I mean, I probably could do it, but let's actually just try making the Ender IO crafter. I've never used this thing, but I'm assuming it's probably pretty good. So to make this thing, we're going to need a machine chassis. I've made these before. Not too bad. Steel, bunch of stuff. That's fine, but the hard part is the Z-Logic controller. It's basically a zombie brain chip. And to make that, we're going to need the Slice and Splice. And to make that, we're going to need Solarium, Graphite, we're going to need a Skull, Machine Chassis, Block Cutting Blade, and a Mana Steel Shears. I think I can make this all? What's, what's Solarium? That's in the Alloy Smelter. Soul Sand and Gold, that's easy. Mana Steel Shears I already looked up. It's just two Mana Steel Ingots, no problem. I've made Hop Graphite Ingot before. Uh, what about this? Oh, just a bunch of diamonds and steel in the center. Okay, so we can make all this. Let me get that together, the slice and splice. All right, I think I got it all together. Get ready to do some slicing and splicing. Let's put it right here. Let's get on power. I probably should have grabbed one of those capacitors. Not that it matters. I don't know how long this thing takes to work. All right, so it takes the base ingredients here plus... To do the slicing and splicing, you need an iron axe here and shears. And I think it uses up the durability, not that it matters much, because I doubt you're going to need to make hundreds of Z-Logic controllers. And I think you can just shift-click the stuff inside. Yeah, it knows where to go. Solarium. And... What goes there? Alright. I grabbed a capacitor as well. One of those dungeon capacitors. Whew, that makes it hold a lot more power. You can see I'm running into power problems again. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess I'm out of the uh, seeds and everything. 
Yeah, that's most likely why. Because I think I, I think I chunk loaded it, didn't I? If we look here. Oh. Oops. No. Oh, right, you can't scroll the map. Well, anyway, I think I chunk loaded the place that has all the generators and stuff. I was thinking maybe that's why it wasn't working sometimes. It's too far away from it and it wasn't chunk loaded, but uh, I don't think that's it. I think it's just running out of seeds and stuff. Right, so, redstone. <laughs> that was pretty fast. Let's do another one. And one more. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, whew. Just a display error. I thought I deleted him. And with that, I think I have absolutely everything ready to make the crafter. Yeah, there we go. All right. Again, I've never used this thing before. I'm assuming it takes power. Yes. So, let's experiment with this thing. Gonna hook it up to some power. Let's go put it near where we want it to be. And I've got the three things that it's gonna use. Lettuce, onion, cucumber. Oh, right, we need the tool. And I don't want to take that out of my kitchen. I'm sure it's easy to make. Uh, what is it? Spring salad takes cutting board, which is this. Okay. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to hook it up just right back here. In fact, I think I'll put it... I don't know, I guess just like right here. I might even just leave it here. Alright, it's got power. Let me just check how we're doing on seeds. Yeah, I think it's just because we ran out of seeds. Convert some of these over. Okay, how does this thing work? I have no idea. Um. <laughs> Show recipes. There. You can make all 4,362 of these. Thanks. That's very helpful. Does this thing only allow you to make one recipe at a time? If it does, that's going to be very disappointing. Buffering single items, buffering item stacks. I do not know what that means. I'm guessing this is the recipe, right? That is. This looks like it's only going to make one recipe at a time. Uh-oh. I might have to just settle for spring salad. I mean, spring salad's fine, right? It's four and a half. It's fine. So, lettuce, onion, and cutting board. Yeah, looks like, uh... I think that's it, and then I'm guessing this is where the raw ingredients go. Oh, they only go into the place that you marked over here. Oh, that's cool. Keeps this from getting filled up with crap, so you can't just, like, put anything you want in here. It has to be the specific item in the specific place. And well, there we go. So, let's grab some more lettuce and onion and see how fast this thing crafts. I'm sure it'll get faster if we put in a capacitor, of course, but let's just see what the base speed is. Grab a stack of that. And a stack of onions. Yeah, that's more than fast enough. And I could always put it, one of those capacitors in it if I want. I think I have one left from dungeons. That is disappointing, though, that this thing only does one recipe at a time. It's a pretty expensive recipe. T to make the crafter itself, I mean. Anyway. Alright. So we got spring salad. Let's set this up so that it, uh... The crafter gets filled up. So let's make a new item channel here. Disable it for now. And for the 
crafter. We're going to insert. I don't think I need to set any sort of a limit on how many items because it looks like the crafter itself is smart and make sure it doesn't overfill or fill up with the wrong thing. And from here, I also probably don't need to filter it because of the fact that it can only fill up with one thing. But I figure for performance reasons, it's probably better to set a filter. I'm not actually sure, but I feel like it would be better. Because I feel like if I say, take anything out of the drawer controller, it's going to like ask for a list of every single item that the drawer has to deal with, and then try to shove it inside of the crafter, and then the crafter is going to be like, no, 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 yes. I feel like if we filter it, it's probably just going to not request all the items at the same time. I could be wrong. I don't know how the whole thing's implemented. So, extract, let's just set lettuce and that. Stack at a time, sure. And I think that should be it. Filled up lettuce. Hmm. Why is the onion not filling up? Oh, it might be the stack at a time. Maybe because it's the whole stack. It's trying to transfer a whole stack and that doesn't fit. Oh, it's because I put the wrong thing in. That too. That might do it. Okay, it's fine. Take that out. Starts making more and starts filling up. Eventually, there's a lettuce. Okay, so now we have automatic food that we can feed our gourmialises. Where do I want to go from here? See, I'm kind of making like a temporary base over here with Batania. Because I'm not super happy with this Batania place and I have a really cool idea of where I want our Batania base to be. Here's what I'm thinking. There is a flower. A functional flower. I don't remember what it's called. Let's see if we can find it. Ah, dang. Okay, so my idea for the Botania base actually isn't possible just yet. We need to get further in Botania before I can do it. I need a functional flower called the Bubbel. Bubble. And what it does is it basically creates a ball of air around it underwater. So I want an underwater Botania base. Imagine that, like deep in the sea. There's just a bunch of bubbles created by Batania flowers that make it so that when you're underwater, you just see nothing but water around you. Just like an orb of cleared out water. I think it'd be super cool. But yes, to do that, I need to make the portal to Alfheim. And before then, I need to get like pretty deep into generating lots and lots of mana. So I definitely have to generate mana and get that whole thing up and going before I can move my Batania base. So, let's generate a bunch of mana. First thing I want to do, I think I have it over here. Yeah, Mana Seer Monocle. So I made this just a little while ago, haven't used it yet. Very simple recipe. Some nuggets, Mana Glass, Mana Steel Ingot. This goes on, I think, in baubles. There we go. Yeah, so what that does is when you mouse over flowers like this, it shows you the range in which they have an effect. So for this, that means if any food drops within that range, within a one block radius of it, it will eat it. So that tells you the radius of the flower. Very useful when you want to pack a bunch of these clothes together, which I do want to do. I've got three more of these gormialises. You want to make sure that their, their eating planes don't intersect, I suppose. Or I guess they could intersect, just as long as the food doesn't intersect. You know, you don't want the food to be able to be picked up by two flowers. Because then one might, the wrong one might eat it and just waste it. So you want to keep them separate. And this allows you to see how to keep them separate. So I'm going to take the setup I have right here with the dropper and the hovering hourglass and all that. And I'm just going to multiply it by three more. Alright, I think I've got everything together to do what I want to do. So I just cleared out that ring around this place I had made. I know, it was kind of pretty, but I'm going to move base soon and I need more room. And by base, I mean the Batania base, not my whole base. So I don't think I've shown how the mana tablet works before. That's not required, it's just I want to break this mana pool here to kind of move stuff around. And I don't want to waste the mana, and I'm pretty sure if you break a mana pool, the mana disappears. So I want to be efficient, I want to suck up the mana into the mana tablet. Now, by default, 
You see the little icon down there that shows the mana tablet pointing towards the pool? That means by default the mana tablet is going to be drained. But we want the opposite. We want the mana pool to, to fill up the mana tablet. So, boop. And use that to fill it up. See, there's a little effect. And if you look, it's draining pretty rapidly. So I'm going to use that just to suck up all the mana. In the meantime, I'll... Oh, yeah, I should probably use an axe. Okay, so now none of the mana is wasted. It's stored in the tablet. Okay. Let's grab the rest of these flowers. Not sure if I need to make more mana spreaders. I'll figure that out in a second. I'll break this too. So I've got four of these flowers. Let's just start setting them down. So you can see that's its range. So I want the next one to be there. So there's no overlap, right? Yeah. So I want there to be a distance of two between each of them. All right, no, there's no overlap. So let's do the dropper and the hovering hourglass thing like before, but let's make it a little bit more pretty. I actually didn't realize this for a very long time. I don't think I've ever built with them, but the living rock, which I like to use to build Botania stuff because it just feels appropriate. You can actually turn it into living rock brick, which looks so much better than the default living rock, which looks kind of weird. So let's try this out. Oh, that is a million times better. There we go. Got them set up. They're going to make kind of annoying clicking noises all the time now, so I'm going to put a muffle block. Hopefully that reaches all of them. I think it does. Yeah, nice. Shh. Shh. I wonder if I could make these quiet. The soul sand by putting a muffle block on them. <laughs> Muffle the demons. Okay. We have four mana spreaders. That's not quite enough. I mean, that's enough for the mana generation part, but not the mana distribution, but whatever. That's fine. Um, we want these to be as close to the mana pools as possible. So let's place the mana pools first. So you can think of the mana pools as basically batteries for mana. You know, they hold a bunch of it. And I want to produce a bunch of mana and be able to hold a bunch in reserve because it doesn't generate extremely fast. It takes a little while to build it up. So I'm going to use a bunch of mana pools and mana distributors. I think I'll put it here. Yeah, so mana distributors just distribute the mana that they receive out to any of the four sides. Mana pools connected to any of the four sides. So, for example, if the mana distributor receives mana, it'll distribute it to the four pools. Very simple. I probably don't have enough to do all of these, I'm assuming. Nope. Alright, close enough. I'll make more later. God, I hate the lack of symmetry. Now, let's... I gotta think of where I want to put the mana spreaders. Because they need to be able to hit the mana distributor. So they need to be kind of above. I think I can probably just put them here. I think that would reach... Let's see. Like, I don't think that'd be obstructed. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I changed my mind. Instead, I'm putting the mana spreaders directly on top. Because the mana from um, generating flowers will transfer to the mana spreader absolutely instantly. Like, there's no transmission time or anything like that. It's just, it'll instantly go to it as long as they are in range of each other. I'm not sure what the exact range is, but they have to be reasonably close. But the mana spreaders themselves, the pulses they send, do have travel time. So you want the distance between the thing that's going to accept mana and the mana spreader to be as small as possible. So if I put them up here, the connection between the flower and, and the mana spreader is instant, but this connection across is kind of delayed because it has to go across all these blocks. So if I put it here, it still receives the mana from the flower instantly, but the transmission time is reduced because it's so close to it. Maybe a little bit less pretty, I'm not sure. I think it looks fine. Okay, um, I think we're all set up to generate the mana. Again, I can't really distribute it to a runic altar or anything like that because I don't have any more mana spreaders. But what we want to do now is hook up these droppers. 
to our crafter over here. And how do I want to do that? I guess I want a service tunnel, huh? Yeah. All right. Let me look down here. We could... We're like pretty much directly in a line here, so I think I just want to go down into my power generation room and probably just dig this way. All right, got a service tunnel running down there. Got these all hooked up and named. Food dropper one through four. But let's go turn on the channel. Or I guess set up the channel first. So I guess we can do this... No, we can't do this on the seventh channel because we're already interacting with the crafter. So we're using up all the channels on this thing. Trying to get as much use out of it as possible. New channel. Disable it. So we're going to extract from the crafter. Extract a stack at a time. Sure. And then we want to insert into these food droppers. And I'm going to say, let's just keep one stack in each. And I think that's it. So this thing should now be running out of food. It is excellent. Oh, I should probably set this to round robin. That way it'll distribute it evenly. Once we build up a buffer, it won't matter, but for now it probably does. And I see mana. Ooh. They're all filled up with mana. So they're all generating, they're all receiving. Let's take a look at it. I think we can see the mana bursts, as you can see, because of the Mana Seer monocle. I think if I take that off. Yeah. So it allows you to see mana bursts. Ooh. Looks pretty cool. Look at him go. The thing actually might not craft fast enough to supply four at the same time. Are these building up a buffer at all? Six? Oh, that one's got almost a stack. Hmm. It actually might not be enough. All right, I think I can cure that. Let's grab the capacitor. My last dungeon capacitor. It's probably going to make the crafter super fast, I would think. Or certainly at least fast enough. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that craft. <laughs> look at that go. Why are we not getting more lettuce? Are we out of lettuce? No. Is it just taking its sweet time refilling? Oh yeah. Just taking a while for some reason. I wonder why it's taking so long, though. Isn't it set to check whether it needs to be filled every second? Ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's more than fast enough, and my glider just broke. Ah, goodbye. Now we look good. Yeah, they're awful. So check that out. Look at how much mana we have already. I mean, I know they're not very full, but remember, these ones are being divided four times. You can see there's already a little bit. And these are just going to keep producing and producing and producing, and pretty soon we're going to have a lot of mana. Now, this whole, like, mana distributor way is not the way I prefer to distribute mana. There's, I think, more efficient ways to make kind of huge batteries of mana that I found, anyway. There's probably even better ways that I don't know of. But there's a whole spark system. Sparks are a way of transmitting mana, and they're pretty cool. So in the past, I've used these spark augments to make it so that I have a huge battery that just fills up, like, a huge battery of mana, of just these mana pools, and each one of them is set to recessive. And any recessive pool, any pool with a recessive spark over it, will automatically try to fill up a pool with a dominant spark over it, so, what I'd usually do is just make a ton of mana pools 
with recessive sparks and then like one mana pool with a dominant spark. So that, that one mana pool is always filled up because sparks transmit mana extraordinarily fast. Probably way faster than you could possibly use it. So that's what I prefer to do, but I took a look and the spark itself we can craft easily. Which will be nice for something later on. But the augments, like dominant and recessive, all require pixie dust. And for that we need to make the portal to Alfheim, which requires a lot of mana in the first place. So gotta wait for that. These many distributors will do fine though. How are we looking on power? It's already gone up a little bit. Yeah, I can see these mana spreaders are constantly full. It's always, once you make a contraption to generate mana, it's always so fun just to watch it. Just look at all the mana. Look at all of it. Alright, so what are we actually going to do with this mana, right? I think the first thing I want to do, eventually I want to make the portal to Alfheim, of course. Because that should allow me to make the Bubel and a bunch of other stuff. Like the Sparks. But I think the most pressing thing to make... Oh, I'm looking for my glider, it's broken. The most pressing thing to make is the flowers that increase growth rate. I want to get off my alliance, or reliance on the bone zone. And also, this thing doesn't have any bones at all, and I keep running out of canola. Even though I'm really not using my power that much, I'm just... Like, you can see there's like nothing left. So I desperately need to get those growth flowers going on for this garden. So I think that's the next thing I'm going to tackle. And uh, let me just double check and make sure I can actually make those. Hopefully you don't need the portal to Alfheim to make those. That'd be pretty pretty sad. Nope, there it is, Agricarnation. And just to make sure the recipe is still doable, let's look at it in JEI. Rune of Spring, which we haven't made yet. Some trees, wheat, Rune of Water, Rune of Fire. Rune of Water is easy. Oh yeah, we can absolutely make that. Okay. So I think I'm going to save that for the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to make a bunch of agricarnations to get our whole power system and farming system kind of self-reliant. And then after that, I think I'll try to make the portal to Alfheim.